All right, we're continuing um, into the products and quotients section. What you first must recognize is that we have two um, functions being multiplied by each other. And so what you do is you go to your graphic organizer, we have keeping track of the information, and we call this one right here the first function, and so we call that f prime of x. Ah, bah, bah, bah. We call that f of x. And f of x in this case is nice and neat, e to the x. And then we call this one right here the second function, s of x, and so that's 3x squared minus 2x. Then what we do is we take the derivative of each piece. The derivative f prime of e to the x is e to the x, and the derivative s prime is going to be 6x minus 2. Then we have to recall the product rule. Product rule says that the derivative is going to be f prime of x times s of x plus um, f of x times s prime of f of x times s prime of x. So what that means for us visually is that this piece right here means to multiply these two pieces together and then this piece right here means to multiply these two pieces together and then what we do is we put a plus sign between them we're adding them together. And so my y prime is going to be e to the x multiplied by 3x squared minus 2x. Don't need this right here. And then I have plus, and then I have these two, um, e to the x times um, 6x minus 2. I can distribute the e to the x and so that's 3x squared e to the x minus 2x e to the x. You just put the e to the x's at the end. I have like terms in the middle, and so they combine. 3x squared e to the x plus 4x e to the x minus 2 um, e to the x. And then the only thing we have in common is e to the x, and so we can factor it out e to the x e to the x multiplied by 3x squared plus 4x minus 2 and there we have it that's our derivative number 15 Um, is f of x is equal to e to the x times ln of x. Again, we have to notice we have two separate functions being multiplied together. And so we go off to our graphing organizer. Um, our first term is e to the x. Its derivative is e to the x. Our second term is ln of x. Our derivative is 1 over x and then we just put them together these two first plus these two second and so f prime is e to the x ln x plus um, e to the x times 1 over x again got lots of e to the x's in there so I can factor that out and so that leaves me with e to the x times ln of x plus 1 over x, and that is my derivative. I do not change the ln of x to a 1 over x, because I have already taken the derivative, so no more work needs to be done. I just had to factor out the uh, common term. Okay, be careful there. Be very, very careful. Um, number 16, um, I have my function f of x is equals to x to the fourth power minus 3x squared minus 6 divided by 5x minus 2. For this function right here, I am not multiplying, but I do have a quotient. Again, I have to recognize I have two functions. So I go off to my graphic organizer. And so the first function it will be the top function. That's x to the 4 minus 3x squared minus 6. The derivative is 4x 
cubed minus 6x. Then the second function is 5x minus 2. The derivative will therefore be 5x. No, oh, just 5. Uh -huh. And just like before, we multiply this times this. But now, because we have a quotient, we actually have to subtract and then multiply it this times this. The quotient rule comes with a subtraction. Oh, I should write it out. Um, f prime, the derivative, is the derivative of the top. Let's make this a y. The derivative of the top times the um, bottom function minus the top times the derivative of the bottom function divided by the bottom function squared. That's your product rule. Ah, that's your quotient rule. And so, therefore, whew, this is 4x cubed minus 6x multiplied by 5x minus 2 minus, and then that's 5 times x to the fourth minus 3x squared minus 6 divided by 5x minus 2 squared. Whew. I gotta simplify by finding these things out carefully. Whew. 4 times 5, that's 20x to the fourth power minus 8x cubed minus 30x squared plus 12x minus 5x to the fourth plus 15x squared um, plus 30 and of course I keep the denominator don't fall the denominator out leave it in its factor form <sighs> I got a group like terms x to the four x to the four that's a 15 x to the four x to the third there's just one x to the third so that's 8x cubed um, x squared and x squared so that's minus 15x squared, then I have a 12x, and then I have a 30, and of course that's divided by your 5x minus 2 squared. Now is there anything I can factor out from the top? It doesn't seem that way. And so therefore that would be our final answer. Alright? Yeah. The quotient rule is a lot more fun than the product rule. I know, I know. So that's number 16. Number 17 is y is equal to 5x to the fourth multiplied by log base 4 of 7. Now this question right here might look like a product rule, but it is not. But that doesn't matter. You can still use the product rule to get you to the answer. That's my first term. The log is the second term. You go to your graphic organizer. The first term, f of x, is 5x to the 4. Therefore, the derivative is 20x cubed. The second term is log base 4 of x. The derivative is 0. And that's because there is no x. I should put an x, that should be a 7. Right here. And so the derivative y prime is this times this. That's 20x cubed log base 4 of 7 plus this times this. But anything times 0 is 0. And so my derivative has only one term. Number 18, I have um, f of x is equal to 2x plus 2 divided by log base 5 of x. This is a quotient, so I'm going to be using the quotient rule, so I will be subtracting. And my first term is simple enough, 2x plus 2. My derivative of my first term is going to be 2. My second term 
is going to be log base 5 of x, so my derivative of my second term is 1 over x. And of course I cross and subtract. So f prime is going to be 2 log base 5 of x minus 1 over x times 2x plus 2 divided by log base 5 of x. That is equals to 2 log base 5 of x minus 2 minus 2 over x after I distribute the 1 over x, negative 1 over x, negative 1 over x. But I cannot leave a fraction in a fraction. And so what I do is I use the shortcut of multiplying by the lowest common denominator. Well, if you look carefully in the top, I only have one denominator, that's x. And if I look at the denominator, there is no denominator. If I look at the denominator, there is no denominator. So my lowest common denominator is x. So I have to multiply throughout x by x, both in the numerator and in the denominator. So that leaves me with 2x log base 5 of x minus 2x minus 2 divided by x log base 5 of x. And there you have it. That is my derivative. Um, question number 19, it's a little bit of a tricky question. I have f of x is equals to 3x ln of x multiplied by 3x plus 4. This right here is my first function and the 3x plus 4 is my second function. So I go to my graphic organizer. My first function, f of x, is e to the x ln x. My second function is 3x plus 4. And in fact, the derivative of the second function is very easy. The derivative of 3x plus 4 is 3. However, the derivative of e to the x ln x is more complicated. I have to recognize that e to the x, l and x are actually two terms being multiplied by each other. And so to find that derivative, I have to actually do a second, count them, a second product rule. So my first function is e to the x. The derivative of the first function is e to the x. My second function is ln of x. The derivative of the second function is 1 over x. So, my derivative is this times this plus. So that's e to the x ln x plus, and then this times this, e to the x times 1 over x. Oof. Now that I have all my pieces, I simply cross and put a plus sign between them to take me home. So your f prime of x is equal to e to the x ln x plus, I can simplify and write this as e over x, multiplied by 3x plus 4, and then plus 3 times e to the x ln x. <laughs> to simplify, I got to distribute the parentheses, and so my f prime is going to be 3x e to the x ln x um, plus 4 e to the x ln x um, plus 3x e to the x over x plus 4 e to the x over x. And of course, got these two right here will simplify. And so my final answer. 3 to the x, e to the x, ln x, plus 4, e to the x, ln x, plus 3, e to the x, plus 4, e to the x, over x. And so, five hours later, ah, we finally have an answer. As they say in the business, good luck.